90 metres long in total. Um, we'll never see it at its full length above ground. It's quite amazing, isn't it? I think I'm about the first official visitor uh, coming in here. And I think the first thing that strikes you is just the sheer scale of it all, really. Um, and the amount of engineering challenges. I mean, someone was saying a second ago, we're actually under the sea here. And you realise just how much of an engineering task that is, let alone anything else. I think the other thing that strikes you is just how much preparation is going into this. All the teams, everyone I've met so far, really positive about what we're going to do. So it's a great moment to be here, just before we get into the start of tunnelling proper. Really looking forward to it. So we're getting close to the point where we stop doing the uh, final shaft lining and then we change our focus to preparation for launching the TBM. So we've got to build a false floor up to the level of that uh, hole in the wall and then we start lowering the TBM, Hiwa Itarangi, down in sections, start bolting it all together and then it's going to push through into the inlet shaft and from there we'll start tunnelling proper. I'm always grateful to the, the guys and girls that are out here doing the hard work. To me, they're the heart and soul of what Central Intercept is about. A lot of them will look back and say this is a career highlight, and I hope they're exceptionally proud of working on this project. We are trying to make a difference. This is something we're building for Auckland's growth, a growing global city, and this is the sort of infrastructure it needs. So really proud to be part of that, really proud of what Watercare is doing, and I think that's the overarching feeling you feel right now. that screams out uninitiated visitor is back on the old noggin. Turns out the city rail link we ventured down last week isn't the only big tunnel project on the go. This one, a 15 kilometre long fix for Auckland's waste and stormwater woes, comes with dozens of Italian lilts. This is Santa Barbara. And a centuries old tradition. She's the patron of all the miners and tunnelers. I'm very respectful and I believe she protects us. What do the Italians bring to it apart from a silky accent? That's just their world class expertise in tunnelling. They're doing some of the most complex tunnels around the world, some of the longest tunnels around the world. So, what part of Italy are you from? Italy? I'm not from Italy, cuz. I'm from uh, New Zealand. <laughs> One of God's own, bro. <laughs> I'm from a small town called Foxton Beach, man, right down the line, you know. So, it's actually primo to be up here and a part of a project like this, man. The $1.2 billion Central Interceptor Pipeline, designed to reduce wet weather overflows into Auckland waterways, has been a decade in the planning and now eight months into its five-year construction. Going down to 110 metres at its lowest level um, below the surface, so quite some challenges. These are called mega projects for a reason. The dollar value is big, the equipment is big, uh, the scale of what we're doing is big. In five years' time, our beaches will be cleaner for everyone, you know, that's what I think the best thing about this project is. So know? when there's a heavy rain, we're not swimming amongst all the you-know-what. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but if that's for the future, right now it's about completing the main shaft. It's 40 metres down. And this doesn't bother you one bit? Not at all. <laughs> so there's something wrong with me, right? <laughs> Into which the tunnel boring machine will be lowered to begin its hard labours from the Mungary Waste Treatment Plant to Grey Lynn on the opposite side of the Auckland Isthmus. This is the operator cabin. This is the brain of, of everything. I'm trying to imagine this 110 metres under the harbour in this tiny cabin. Yes, in, in, it's not for everybody, this sort, of, uh, <laughs> this, this sort of duty. The operator guiding the massive cutter head from near the front with 18 support units, including this emergency safety chamber. If we have a fire somewhere in the tunnel, the people have to come here. Attached behind in train-like formation. And all of that will be like an underground factory, 200 metres long. 200 metres long? 200 metres long, yeah. 
Then, an apparatus totally unexpected, a hyperbaric chamber, vital for workers, undertaking maintenance on the cutter head in highly pressurised conditions below the water table. Putting in compressed air to hold back the water effectively creates a, a deep dive condition, and so we have to put them through the hyperbaric chamber, effectively, so they won't get the bends. How are you going on your Italian lessons? Oh. Whenever I see her, buongiorno, <laughs> you know? And they go, kia Eddie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buongiorno and kia ora, yeah. <laughs> Hello, this is Dominica, micro tunnel boring machine, which will be starting the drive from Mero to Hecock. So this is our tunnel boring machine. Uh, this is how we will be constructing both link sewers, which will ultimately connect into the central intercept tunnel. This is the cutting tool which will be engaging with the ground and uh, this will be ripping the ground slowly and the material will be coming into the machine. Some of the other bits and pieces are required for launching the MTBM and for completing the pipe jacking. Uh, so if you look around we have uh, interjack rings, we have launch eyes. The large piece of Lego is our gantry crane and this is the, the way that we will drop everything in and out of the shafts. This is just one operator operates uh, the TBM. He pretty much controls everything from where I'm sitting right now and this is the controls uh, that he'll be using to operate uh, every stage of the excavation to taking the material out. You can see I'm 1.65 meters tall and this is all we got. This is where the TBM pilot is going to spend most of his time for the next couple of years. It will be very noisy with all the hydraulics operating, so it's pretty difficult conditions that we'll be working underground. Although we're underground, we're actually underwater as well. So Auckland and many other places have groundwater tables. So the problem is to put a personnel in there, it's like deep sea diving. So the chamber we're in here allows us to pressurise this compartment and the compartment up the front. Then we can bring them back to the safe space and slowly decompress them to make sure they don't get the bends. Just like a sea diving in the ocean. So this is our electric locomotive. So we call it a locomotive, even though it doesn't look like it, because it runs on train tracks. This is position where the driver will sit. He's got his pedals and hand controls here. And the other thing we've been doing while we've had this arrangement in place, we've been practicing some of our emergency evacuation drills. Um, just recently, we were practicing getting an injured person out over the muck skip in the event that the train derails. Mm -hmm. 